Indie Warriors, do you like anime girls? If so, I have the game for you. Literary Rose here with I Dream of Indie to offer you my review of Super Bullet Break on the PC. Super Bullet Break is a single-player deck-building roguelite where you collect anime girls to save the gaming world. And no, that is not hyperbole. Brought to you by the devs at BXIDE Inc. and publisher PCube. Follow three anime girl gamers as they investigate online games that have mysteriously been broken and modded, turning all the cute to sexy anime girls, not them, the ones in the game, <laughs> into alternate versions of their original selves. The hero is now a villain, the villain thinks they're a random grunt, and so forth. You're contacted by a mysterious girl who tasks you and your two girl gamer friends to enter these games and find the bugs causing these issues. So once you find them, what do you do? You beat the shit out of them using cards! And that about sums up the plot, which really just offers a silly excuse to collect poke girls of various designs. There's cute ocean instrument playing girls, demon cat girls, a few pixels shy of hentai girls, they've got them all. Lowly too, if you're a creep. Jokes aside, despite the obvious sexualization of these characters that borders on uncomfy with the younger looking girls, the art in Super Bullet Break is fantastic. The attention to detail in their poses, their bright, colorful, intricate outfits, their massive breasts, their incredibly long, smooth, uncooked chicken thighs. That's what y'all think of first as well, right? When you look at this art. <laughs> and you don't get just unique, sexy, cute art for each character. They all have their own backstories, abilities, and Japanese voice lines. These voice lines were a real treat that enhances from your basic bitch collecting game to a gathering of fine anime wives. Mine is the children, stop looking at them, no touchy. Each anime girl has a unique theme that her appearance makes immediately clear, and each theme comes with different bonuses for your deck building combat. Did y'all notice I went straight to the art and voice lines versus the gameplay? That was not an oversight, because I truly believe that if you're playing this for the gameplay, you might need to rethink your life choices. It's a fairly standard deck builder in terms of gameplay. You've got a variety of cards for different kinds of attacks, defenses, and you'll have to switch that up based on the enemies. Standard shit. In terms of the map design, each game that you enter to investigate and purge these bugs is made up of three levels. At the end of each level, there's a boss, with the third level having the final boss of that game. You encounter other bosses and enemies on your way to the end of the level, many of which you can avoid, some of which you cannot. These levels are divided into winding paths you can choose from, many of which intersect with one another as you traverse the level a la Slay the Spire. Pick your route depending on whether you need more items, more bitches, I mean bullets, or to take a quick snooze in order to gain some health. You can play Super Bullet Break using mouse or controller, but I went with the controller, mostly because it was already plugged in and I was lazy, but I can confirm that both options are good. In terms of difficulty, I would say that it depends on your experience with the deck building genre, as well as your patience to find out what everything means on your own, cause the game will not tell you. My first few runs in this game were a beautiful chaotic mess of anime girls shrieking into my headphones as they attack slime monsters, fellow anime girls, or get hit in return. I have the sound of one stuck in my head, crying in pain over and over due to the many times I died at that particular boss. For the most part, I didn't mind this chaos because the gameplay style can be fairly addictive and I love me some pretty anime girl art. But once I started dying to bosses over and over because I had no strats, the lack of a tutorial at any point in the game became very clear to me. Super Bullet Break does not hold your hand or even acknowledge its existence. So get ready to read a lot of menus or trial by fire because those are your only two options. Regardless, even if you are a deck building whiz, 
there's plenty of levels and bosses for you to chew on and spit out. Super Bullet Break ran with no issues on my PC, but it did have a weird quirk. It refused to let me play full screen. No matter what I did in the game options, to my monitor, to my resolution, these anime girls refused to fill my screen, which was a bit disappointing. For settings, you can adjust various volumes, text speed, refresh yourself on the controls, or take a deep dive into the manual, where every single element of the game that should have been explained as an in-game tutorial is broken down in painstaking detail. No, I'm not bitter. And the music is cavity-inducing anime sweetness that sounds like every shoujo you've ever seen. Which is a compliment, because shoujo animes have the best music. Who doesn't love a bubbly, twinkly beat soundtrack, like eating cotton candy with your ears? All in all, I was pleasantly surprised by Super Bullet Break. Based on first impressions, I was expecting shitty fan service the game, but actually it was a pretty high quality fan service the game, and a fun roguelite deck builder. If you like this art and gameplay, I do recommend picking this one up. We thank you so much for supporting clickbait-free content here at I Dream of Indie. We couldn't possibly make it without you and these brave indie warriors and legends. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Adriana Amato, CJR, Julian Colbus, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Christian Cruz, PSC, Solaru C, Chic Geek, Ancha277, and Acrophobe. Indie legends include Nathan Moore, Skeptism, Jen Rose, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beefarinis, Business Cody, Chiron, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, Ophidia in mind, Lord Metroid, Seacoil, and Larkison. Thank you so much for everything that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for iDream of Indie. Everybody else head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.